<laughs> we got the four wheeler for the kids going strong. Hey! <laughs> We got the new bad boy out. So Brandon, Brandon got it. Uh, Brandon got it officially running today. Woo! Look at that rear wheel. Oh, you saw that wobble? Yeah, look, look at the rear wheel. <laughs> Bro, that rear wheel is janky. It's right there. <laughs> we probably bent that rear wheel. Oh my god. <laughs> the rear wheel looks like it's about to fall off. Yeah, the right rear. Yeah, it looks bent. What's up guys, welcome back to another episode on Proven Power Cycles. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Eric and I am the tuner here. Now, admittedly, we are at the end of the day and the, uh, the boys left for the day, so I am here on my own right now. But uh, again, just wanted to recap, you guys seem to be enjoying kind of like the projects that are going on here because admittedly, we can't make videos on every single bike as much as we'd love to. It's just too much uh, on us and uh, it's too many bikes that we physically cannot post this many bikes, kind of. Uh, we can't really do videos on all of them, unfortunately. We'd love to, but we can't. So anyway, well, I figured we'd go through a few updates with you guys and uh, show you guys what we got going on. So the MT-09 that came in that they told him it was a blown motor, we ended up getting this diagnosed. It was actually uh, a couple of sensors, or a sensor, it was the uh, TPS sensor. Uh, along with, uh, honestly, a couple of fuses that took a shit too. So a couple of fuses popped and a couple of sensors popped. So um, <laughs> we ended up replacing those few sensors and the uh, and a couple of fuses, reset all the check engine lights, you know, kind of went through the full diagnostic procedure and the bike ends up running and everything. Now it doesn't have a battery. We got a new battery for it. We installed it and everything, but admittedly we had a bad cell in the new battery. Now. Some people are always wondering like, oh, you know, I just got this brand new battery. I threw it in there and I'm still having weird issues. Well, believe it or not, sometimes even a brand new battery has problems with it. So, and that's what we found out here. It showed that it had good voltage, but when we would go to start the bike, the bike would just not start. It didn't want to start at all. So usually that's an indication of like a something internally in the, in the battery, like a bad cell or something like that, where when it needs the load, the most during its cranking uh it doesn't get that full wattage and you'll see the voltage tank you'll see it like drop to like nine and a half uh volts ten volts and on some of these bikes it's too low it will not start that motor it won't turn it over so anyway this one's gonna leave on friday we just got the update today from the owner that he will be here friday to pick this up now on to our little 14 here when i say little it's massive so we have a few more items to clean up and get done. We have gotten the pump gas tune done to it. We just got done doing the front suspension. As you can see, it looks killer, even without the fairings on it. We got the rear lowered as well. Well, Lewis did, and he's done a great job. So there's some things that we need to clean up. There's some things where uh, Lewis was down there kind of modifying some stuff. So there's some things we need to clean up. We still need to plug and take out these hoses for the EVAP canister. So there's a handful of things that we still need to do on the bike. Not a big deal. We're getting near the finish line now. The last thing that we need to do is get it back on the, well, we need to get it dressed. Then we'll put it back on the dyno for you guys. Cause I know a lot of you guys really wanted to see some of these bikes lowered uh, with uh, them being fully dressed and everything. So I just mainly like doing this cause you can see the colors on the exhaust starting to come in and it's so badass looking. Now again, we have a few smudges here that we're gonna wipe down before it goes back onto the dyno. Uh, we got to put the wideband bung back in it and uh, get it ready for the MR12 tune, but it looks killer. Honestly, it's it's coming together. It looks really, really good. I cannot wait until this thing is dressed up to show you guys. So we officially started on the BUSA on the fuel system as well. Um, it's going to go something along the lines of this. So we have, uh, we're going to set the relay somewhere up in here. It needs an external or it needs a uh, standalone relay system. Um, a separate relay versus going through the OEM connector for the fuel pump. 
uh, because it's going to carry a lot more amperage, a lot more load on it. So we need its independent relay source. We can't utilize the factory relay system. It's just not strong enough to give us nice, consistent voltage to the pump. So we're going to isolate it. So that way it has really nice voltage to the fuel pump. The fuel pump, we actually, some of you may have noticed, we have our two little hooks, our spots here. Now, we tried to fit it in the tail, but honestly, the full setup was too long. We could not get it to fit correctly. I'm sure there's gonna be a few of you out there that'll, I'm sure, tell us exactly how it will fit. But as of right now, that's where we decided. So, so we're gonna get it to set up into there like so. We have a AEM 400 LPH. These are gonna be all red horse lines and fittings. So, but we're gonna run it something like that. So it should look pretty good. Now it is at an angle because it's leaning a little bit, but it should look pretty good. But that's how we're gonna run it. So, and we have it coming up here into the regulator up in the front. We're gonna have it. Now I'm gonna clean all this off later on. I'm just, we're in the middle of the job and we wanted to keep it organized. So everything's kind of sitting up on top of it now. But we are going to, uh, we've been working on it diligently the last couple of days. So, uh, well, today's Monday, but uh, thir last Thursday, last Friday, and then today we've been working pretty diligently on getting it mounted. Uh, getting the routing exactly how we want it. So we have three different bikes that we got to do three different fuel systems on right now So it's a lot to kind of juggle just on that alone. But Anyway, this one's gonna look really good I'm really really excited to show you guys progress once we start getting the lines ran and everything. It's gonna look so good I love doing these fuel lines and these oil lines they just, it looks like artwork whenever uh, whenever we finish it. So I love it. We got the GSX 1000 here. Now this thing's gonna see the dyno here in the next day or two. We have this Busa, this Gen 2 Busa. So this was supposed to come in for just a tune. As soon as we fired it up, he had a pretty nasty exhaust leak. So, and now guys, I'm not saying this to poke fun at anybody. <laughs> All right, but. This is why we charge what we charge to do some of these installations. So if you look here, Let's zoom out. If you look here, you see each one of these exhaust hangers is empty. And I, I'll, you know, I can show you guys, but just take my word for it. There's no spring on any of these uh, exhaust hangers. There, there's no spring all the way down. One through four, zero springs. But if you look here, there is no hole for the spring. There's supposed to be a hole that lines up with that. And if you look all up in there, I don't know if I can actually see it on here. It's basically, you can vaguely see it on the other side of that exhaust, uh, exhaust bolt right there. So the hole is in the wrong orientation. The hole actually needs to be situated down here so that, that we can attach the spring to this. So we're gonna have to remove this exhaust system. No matter what, it was gonna have to be removed because they did not put in new exhaust gaskets. Now, sometimes you can get away with reusing your exhaust gaskets. You'll have to put a little bit of gasket maker on there, the little uh, RTV orange, if you will, for exhaust gas. You'll have to put a little bit of RTV on there and then you can actually uh, reseal the system and even that sometimes is not a guarantee that it's gonna seal your system. It'll help, but it's not a guarantee. So us as a shop, we pretty much, no matter what, 100% of the time, whenever we do an exhaust system, I, would, I shouldn't say 100, I'd say 99% of the time we are buying new exhaust gaskets unless the exhaust system does not require new exhaust gaskets, uh, then we, we, you know, obviously we don't get them then. But for the most part, all the other exhaust systems, no matter what, we're buying brand new exhaust gaskets and we're swapping them out just to avoid any exhaust leaks because the last thing you want to do is assemble this full exhaust system and then go to get a tune and then what do you know you got a pretty gnarly exhaust leak or multiple exhaust leaks to where it's like yeah this tune isn't going to be very accurate because we're getting fresh air into the system it's going to throw off your reading by the time it comes out to the tailpipe you got fresh air in your system so it's it's very very realistic going to throw off that tune so we're going to get bad readings and we're going to we don't have a good reference point so and at the end of last week, we had a uh, Turbo ZX14 that came in. So this motor is partially built. It's got a set of pistons in it, uh, low compression turbo pistons. And the rest, I believe, for the most part is stock. But we had it on the dyno recently and the clutch started slipping. The owner purchased a set of springs, uh, like a clutch kit, if you will. And uh, he ordered it online himself. And long story short, 
we have a slipping clutch. So we check the stack height, stack height's a little low. It's still within spec, but it's literally at its lowest point. So that's part of it. The springs that are in there, you know, they're kind of iffy. We're not really sure on the spring rate. Uh, but anyway, he, he, uh, we're, we're, we're gonna get it all fixed. We're going with a different clutch setup. We're gonna go with more than likely an MTC um, stage one, if you will, like a single lockup. So it'll be a very street friendly clutch, if you will. So he thinks we're gonna go with that. And, uh, and we're gonna push this thing and see what kind of power we can get. We're hoping for a little north of 300, which we've already hit that, but we wanna hit it now and, uh, and see what it does without the clutch uh, slipping. So that's, that's this bad boy here. So pretty cool bike, pretty fun. And it looks great. Once it's all dressed up, it looks killer. Um, good looking bike. And as some of you have already noticed too, we got the 25th anniversary Busa on the dyno. We are gonna make a full video of that one. That one's gonna get the uh, Brox camshafts, they're, they're super stock camshafts, and a set of BT Moto velocity stacks, and a full pentacarbon exhaust, and I think a Sprint filter, and I think that's it. I think those are all the things that we're doing on this thing, so it should be a pretty cool video tomorrow morning we're gonna baseline this thing and see what it lays out i can't wait i'm super stoked i've been wanting a booster to come in to do this so very 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 excited to do that so um and that's about it right now guys we do have some other updates here coming out but i'm gonna wait to share that to you we'll do that later on because that'll be later in the week that we need to do those things we are at wednesday yeah today is wednesday so we got the uh 2019 boost on the dyno this one's pretty straight through we he had a pretty gnarly exhaust leak we ended up fixing that uh got it on the dyno now getting it all dialed in we're almost done we're almost finished with that bike but the big update that i wanted to do two of them and now remember we are going to be making a video on this one. We do have a full in-depth video uh, that we're making on the uh, cams. So this one's gonna have the Brox cam swap, the super stock um, stock uh, swap, if you will, along with the uh, BT Moto stacks. And full exhaust, dyno tune, blah, 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 blah. So Lewis is in the middle of this job currently. Um, applying tons of lube so be on the lookout for this video guys we are going to post this one the more of a technical one on our thursday videos and this is another one that we've been working on as you guys well know is the this is like i call it the grudge busa but it's it's a carpenter motor busa and so far we've got part of the fuel system all laid out uh, we have the black nylon lines that we're making and uh, so we have our feed coming in here uh, going in the regulator we're going out we're gonna run a fuel line off of this so our gauge we can uh, we'll have a fuel pressure gauge up there so they can monitor it while they're riding in case they run into any future issues so we're going to we got to run the last little bit of lines now the cool thing about this this uh, this setup if you will we're gonna run quick disconnects for the fuel fitting. So you can literally do it just like OEM. You squeeze and you pull the line right off. So normally on these AN lines, you gotta undo a bunch of fittings just to get your line off. But these quick disconnects, we're gonna make life a whole lot easier. So um, I gotta put that fitting on first and then I can push it in. But anyway, it'll make this a hell of a lot easier. So I'm very, very excited to try these out. I'm hoping for the best. And if they work well, which it's a Red Horse product, I like using Red Horse, but as long as everything works well on it, this thing should work like a champ. We should have no leaks. We, this thing should run beautifully. Well, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but we have the fuel line running underneath here. It runs along the side there. Right along this edge here, you can see where we marked it. We're gonna trim up this aluminum so the line's not riding on that. That will create issues with vibration and stuff over time. So either we're gonna edge this out a little bit or we're gonna add a little bit of protective layering, but to be honest with you, I kind of like edging it out, just a little, cutting it out a little bit. Um, well, that's where the seat goes. Yeah, that's where the seat slides in. Yeah, we can't use those holes. So, and then what we have to do at the end of it, we just have to wire in this relay. So we're gonna have that somewhere up in here. There's really nothing in the tail section. So we'll just mount it. We'll mount it something like this, nice and clean, you know, just so, uh, again, easy access. That way, if they ever just pop the tail, they can check real quick, see if the fuse is blown or anything like that. And then we're gonna run the wiring along the right-hand side here on the bike, and we'll clean this all up. We'll clean all the wiring up, so. Um, but it should look good. Everything should look good. We should, uh, very excited to get this thing underway. 
Woo, <laughs> <laughs> look at that rear wheel. Yeah, look, look at the rear wheel. <laughs> Bro, that rear wheel is janky. <laughs>